But um, so but I but just, I think for me, like actually, uh, never going, uh, never attended freaking. That was like a little bit. But I was still in high school when that was going on. So, oh, uh, when it was like at its height. Oh, you had no business going in uh, at its height. But uh, I did attend Cabo Beach Party when I was in high school. Um, and so me too. And also, and I think I was fifteen. Wow. See, so, yeah, <laughs> actually, that brings up. <laughs> So you see how she be throwing it at the at the fellas <laughs> all the damn time. But I wasn't there. But I wasn't there busting it wide open. But that ain't the point. Why was, was you just, out there? I was looking. Why I was you was out there? Looking. And honestly, uh, that's actually what turned me off, and that's when I knew it was going to be a wrap. What year was the Capitol Beach party? Oh, uh, because I remember going to the Capitol Beach party. I think it was either '97, and that was the last time I went. And um, oh, see, I might went at the toilet because I mean, when did the Capitol Beach party stop? Like. 10 years ago? Man, the info... Uh, no, nah, that's longer than that. Like 20 years ago. Because they, re- they, they reintroduced it after they shut it down as the Texas Beach Party or something like that. And so I don't know if you went to the Texas Beach Party version or the actually original Kappa Beach Party, but we all know the legendary U-Haul truck from the original Kappa Beach Party. That's where it really went down, where they had... U-Haul truck. Oh, yeah. Where they would have the sisters come up, you know, and pop it on, on top of the U-Haul truck. It was... Why the U-Haul truck, though? That's what it was. They had to pull the U-Haul truck up to the beach. That was like the stage. That's where, you know, you put I mean, it on front and center. Hey, you guys know whoever started the Kappa Beach party, please drop the info in the comments. Like, I'm very curious as to what was the agenda. Like, what was the intention? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, until that, no, actually, we need y'all to actually share y'all Kappa Beach party and Freak Nick experiences <laughs> in the comments right now. Hit us on Instagram. Listen, if you uh, went to Freak Nick, you had no business at the Kappa Beach party. <laughs> Your ass is tainted. You was just looking for a good time. And I don't mean that in a positive way. If you were both in attendance at the Freak Nick and the Kappa Beach party, <laughs> that tells me everything I need to know. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, these events, they start off a certain type of way and then they end Because up. here's the thing. Yeah. When you're young, of course, you know, early 20s, okay, you go out there. But if you went to the Freak Nick and you went to the Kappa Beach party, at some point, your ass was too old to be at. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, you're right because it was a, a, a Windows a period, right? Yeah, exactly. But I think both. To be perfectly honest, though, I think both of them went on their downhill at the same time. Even though I think Kappa Beach parties probably started later. Later, yeah. But they start like at the end of the '90s. That's when they both kind of uh, they yeah, self destructed. The they self destructed. Yeah. Wow. And so, um, but yeah, to your point Damn about you being. Old. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but I, I'm sexy though, so it don't matter. I keep it sexy. And so, um, so, um, oh, the point, that's why I put point. You said you were 15, been, remember, I think 15. I was like 15. And, and so, actually, that's, that's kind of, um, you know, that triggered a memory to me. And that's what made me, like, kind of get repulsed by the Kappa Beach party. Cause that second time I went, that second year I went, I remember seeing, like, little 10 year old boys. Um, like they looked like they was like pre adolescent, pre pubescent dude boys, and, and I don't know if it was little girls. But I remember seeing some pre pubescent boys out there smacking women on the ass as they were walking by. Well, when nobody just being me just on just, my just ass. being mannish or whatever. And I was like, hold up, this just don't feel right. Like you know, I'm 18, 19 years old, and I'm out here some ten year olds out here, and I'm you know just I'm just observing, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of in the mix or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm watching little. These little dudes, you know, trying to be like mannish and grown like mm-hmm. some of these other dudes, and they over here like feeling their liberty to smack grown ass women on the asses, and they're like, I'm like, okay, something ain't right with this picture. Right. And literally, like, I think the next year, the city of Galveston like shut the whole operation down. You know, this yeah. just was so roguish. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's honestly a good thing that neither of these um, events are still going this day because it was just like. It was just so roguish. You know what I'm saying? But like, they didn't start that way. That's the thing. I mean, I don't know about the Cabo Beach party, but... And it's not all you know. on the women. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, if they weren't getting a certain type of attention, they wouldn't do it. Hey, man, some of these uh, women out here that are now, like, doctors, lawyers, and uh, politicians, and they, they shitting bricks right now. Uh, they scared about what might come out with this uh, footage that's about to drop for free, Nick. And, uh, well, then it's going to be a whole lot of lawsuits because you cannot well, actually... Produce uh, anything. Um, hey, when it's out there, it's out there. You can lawsuit you can, or whatever. But you can't, especially uh, somebody like Hulu. That's a major corporation. Hey, somebody. Well, some of these women is teachers. They might not can buy afford a lawyer. Some of these women is no deaconesses it's gonna at the church. It's going to take one lawyer to do the whole like you know when they group up a bunch of people for one lawsuit. It has a term. Yeah, a, a class action. Class action. Yes, it's going to take one person. <laughs> You're going to see billboards that say if you. 
were um, <laughs> in the free big video and you wish to pursue if you have legal a, action, <laughs> please call the office. If you, <laughs> I'm telling if you. If you have occurred any mental health damages. Yes, due to <laughs> yes, yes. I'm telling you, it's coming. So you know what? That's fine. Those are who are concerned, just go ahead and save your coins. You may want to get lawyered up so you can be on the front end of that class action. See, that's what's messed up. We're supposed to be in the clear from that era, man. We're supposed to, our stuff was supposed to be like, what happens at Freak Nick stays at Freak Nick. What happens at Kappa Beach Party stays at Kappa Beach Party. Who had the camera, though? That's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. Like, the camera can't be that great of a footage it's that not. they have. You know? VHS uh, camcorders yeah, at so that time. Again, y'all ain't got nothing to worry about because nobody's going to be I able to I mean, the footage is going to be gra- grainy, but... Yeah, you can't. But you know your mama when you see your mama, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, then if only you know is your mama. Oh, you know your auntie. You know well, your auntie. If you only you know that's your auntie, then nobody else has been like, isn't that such such auntie? Mm-hmm. Man, hey, 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 man, a lot of a lot of my hey man, hey, I feel for y'all. Y'all gonna have to answer some questions. But why you feel for the women and not for the men? Because you think women was the only ones out there. Uh, all of the above, all of the above. Because here's the deal: like some I of the hope, footage. I hope your so, daddy so, so, not on none of them. Uh, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I might have to have a conversation with him. What's the conversation? You can't have a conversation now. What's the conversation? You shouldn't have been out there and now look at you on uh, Hulu. Oh, like, that was like, Daddy, you was caught out there, huh? Judgy, that's what you're going to do? No, nah, I'm just saying you was caught out there. <laughs> <laughs> they got you. Listen, to all the women who might have, you know, had um, promiscuous 20s or 30s who were in Freak Nicks, relax. If you even stress, because I feel like at this point in their life, they probably don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? No, why they, well, why are they coming out speaking, saying they don't want it to come out? Not all of them, I'm saying, but some because, of them. Because I don't even think it should come out. Like, I don't think, I have, this is not going to progress black people at all. Like, this is not a positive documentary. No, like, I agree. What is the what is the goal with this? You know what I'm saying? Like, Freak Nick is not the highlight of black culture. In a positive way, you know yeah, what I mean? no, yeah. So to, what's the point? Yeah, to your point. In all seriousness, though, um, I actually uh, fear the light that is going to shed black men in at the same time um, because you know there was some stuff that was happening and, and acts that were being committed that, like, and if they happen nowadays, like you know, they would you would be canceled completely canceled. for or beyond canceled. You probably would be you know, incarcerated. But I don't want this to be used to shape the narrative and uh, to further shape the narrative men. about black men or black women, to be perfectly honest. So, yep. so um, this, who knows, um, you know, how they're going to um, narrate this whole, this whole documentary and experience. But let's just hope, hope let's just hope that there's, you know, a good balanced approach to it and um, an objective and honest approach to it. And, and, educational and, um, experience like let's just educate you on yes these yeah because these are you know people who probably were uh came out of the a different world um you know those type of tv shows you know who wanted to go to a black college and things like that because they saw like these positive images um on tv you know like that show and like i was influenced um you know definitely by that show as well i was so influenced by a different world and you know what's so funny is i didn't mm-hmm. even really fully understand the significance of like a different world representing the HBCU. But mm. I would wake up at five in the morning. I don't know if it was on a Saturday or during school. I think it was actually during the week. I would wake up at five in the morning because, you know, my era, it was reruns. Mm. And I would mm, watch yeah. a different world. Oh, wow. That's at dope. 5 a.m. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Hey, man, which speaks up, man. Shout out to all the HBCUs, man. Um, but especially. Especially Prairie View and um, University. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, um, yeah, and there's no um homecoming like an HBCU homecoming. I've actually bear witness to people who went to PWIs and came to HBCU homecoming and got turned out. Mm-hmm. So, so don't be talking that stuff or try to act like, oh man, oh you don't really mess with the HBCUs or whatever. Or now you're down with the HBCUs. We know, we know y'all want to be a part of the sauce.